And so the first scripture is taken from Psalms 46 to 10th verse. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathens. I will be exalted in the earth. This is the scripture of Psalms 46, the 10th verse. Now, when we read this scripture, and a lot of I'm going to have to go back down home here. A lot of folks, when they read this scripture, and I just let me add this before I go any further. You know, folks have asked me about affirmations, mantras, something that they can recite. as they continue this path, something that will help them to bring about change and transformation in their thinking. Psalms 46, 10th verse. Be still and know that I am God. That's your mantra. That's your affirmation. Now, the problem with the scripture with a lot of folks is when they read this scripture, 46 Psalms, 10th verse, be still and know that I am God. The moment they read this scripture, there is a separation in them and the scripture that they're reading. Because when they read the scripture, be still and know that I am God, they immediately start to think of something outside of themselves they immediately began to disconnect. They immediately began to think that this scripture is in reference to the God somewhere out in heaven or up in heaven, as we've been taught to believe that we, even when we die, we're going to heaven and we're going to be with God. Be still and know that I am God. And the masses of folks find it very difficult to accept this scripture as pertaining to themselves. I want you to follow me here now, because I'm probably going to take you somewhere where you've never been before. Be still and know that I am God. Now, I hear a lot of folks say to me that it's difficult for them to meditate. There's a whole lot of things going on in the mind, a whole lot of stuff that I can't focus on my meditation. Something always coming in, distracting me and disturbing me. That 10th verse said, be still and know that I am God. Now let's take this a little deeper. Whether it be metaphysical interpretation, or spiritual understanding. There are two sides to every coin. They said two sides to every story. 
The first side of this coin is the upper side, as we say. Be still and know that I am God. When we read this, we're thinking in terms, as I've said, something outside of ourselves. We're thinking about the God in heaven that we've been indoctrinated to believe. That God in heaven that we're looking forward to when we die. The back side of this coin, the metaphysical or the spiritual side, the deeper meaning. Be still. In other words, coming to a point in consciousness where you're getting quiet. And when that scripture says, be still and know that I am God, as it said, I will be exalted among the heathens. I will be exalted in the earth. This scripture prefers or refers to the thoughts, the heathen thoughts that we entertain or come into our consciousness that is of a low level of understanding. Those thoughts that come into our mind and try to get us to disbelieve the truth. They are the heathens, not talking about the people out in the world, but the thoughts within our mind that seeks to dominate and control. And so when scripture speaks about being still, Stealing the mind, those heathen thoughts, the thoughts of not believing. Sometimes and most of the time, the thoughts that come are negative and destructive thoughts. Sometimes, and a whole lot of times the ego will speak to you and say, uh-uh, you can't believe or accept that there's a God within you. If God was in within you, then why is life so chaotic? Why is it so confusing? Why is there so much struggle? If God was within you, wouldn't life be a whole lot better? Wouldn't we be able to live in peace and in joy and in harmony and happiness? If God was within you, When you stop and think, and you try to look within, to find this God, to see this God, to feel this God, all that you come up with is, I've got some bones in this body, I've got some organs in this body, I've got some blood in this body. I've got some feelings in this body, but where is God within this body? No, I don't think that God is within this body because I'm having such a difficult time with this life. And if God was within me, why is it that God is allowing me to experience the hardships, the disappointments, the suffering and pain. No, I believe that God is somewhere up in heaven and I must continue to look, search, and believe 
that God is somewhere out there. Well, if you believe that God is somewhere out there, then what mode of transportation are you going to use to get out there? How are you going to get to heaven from right where you are? So you believe and think that when you make your transition, there'll be a evil mode of transportation or there'll be a chariot coming down out of the sky to pick you up and carry you to your heavenly home. If that be the case, do you have the price for that mode of transportation to take you there? Do you have the price to pay for that mode of transportation that will take you to your heavenly home? Be still. And know that I am God. Now let me let me bring this a little closer to you. How can I say that I am God? Well, you've heard it many times. We are co-creators. You've heard it many times. In your metaphysical studies, your metaphysical learning, in your metaphysical lectures. You are not the mind. You are not the body. If you are not the mind and you are not the body, then what are you? In the book of Genesis, it said that we are created in the image and likeness of God. That's what it says in the Bible. What is it that you believe? Do you believe that you are created in the image and likeness of God? Well, let me say this. If you don't believe that you are created in the image and likeness of God, what is it that you believe? What is it that you believe? Now, let me just say this. Before I take you to another level, when we have issues, problems, when we can't discipline ourselves, to take the time to be still, to sit down. Sometimes it, it, it doesn't require that you have to do something, but just take the time to sit down, sit. And sometimes, if I may say this, the only time or the only place where you can go and sit down and be quiet for a period of time is in your bathroom. It's in your bathroom. You can sit and be quiet and take your time and feel a release when you have let go. The only place where you can go and sit down and be quiet is in your bathroom. Now think about it. We can go in the bathroom and we can really get relaxed. We can just sit there and just let everything just come right on down. My God, it feels so good to let go. To let go of a whole lot of stuff we've been holding in. Let it go. It's the same way 
when you're setting for meditation. Getting still and letting go of all of your worries, your concerns, your frustrations, and your disappointments. Flush them out of your consciousness. Flush them out of your mind. Be cleansed. You see, when we go to the bathroom and we and we, we and we have a discharge, we're cleansing the body. Set in meditation and cleanse your mind of all the negativity, all of the unwanted thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Take time to cleanse yourself. We get up in the mornings, and we take baths, and we brush our teeth, and we put on our makeup, and we do our hair, and put on our clothes. We dress up and take care of the body. Why don't we take time to dress up and take care of the spirit within us? Remember, you're not the body. You're not the mind. You are an individualized creation of the God consciousness within you. Why can't we take the time to take care of that which sustains and maintains this life force that animates, animates this body? Why? Can't we take the time? We make all types of excuses. God, I can't meditate. I got so much on my mind. Children are driving me up the wall. The job is demanding all of my time. I've got so much going on around me that I just can't take the time to spend a little time with you. But I want you to be there for me when I get in trouble. I want you to be there for me when I need something. I want you to be there when I'm sick and I'm weak, when I don't have the strength to get up off of my bed, when I, when I don't have the strength to feed myself. I want you to be there for me. But we are not willing to take the time, to make the time, to be there with the source that is responsible for the life that we have. We can give our time and attention to everything out in the world. And we can blame other folks for all the mishappenings that appear to be happening to us. Not my fault, it's their fault. Why would I do this to myself? I wouldn't do it to myself. It's them doing it to me. It's them trying to do it to me. No, I'm not going to take responsibility because it's not my fault. God, why did you allow this to happen to me? Why did you let these doors be closed in my face? Well, it's not God doing it to you. God has never done it to you. We've done it to ourselves. You know, we as parents, we bring children into the world. And when we bring children into the world, we know exactly what is needed for those babies. We know the food. We know the proper care that we have to give them. 
We know what we have to do to help maintain the health of these children that we bring into the world. And in the early years, the children or those babies don't know. But they have a sense of where their protection, where their nourishment is coming from. And you know that a lot of times the child doesn't basically physically ask to say that I'm hungry, it cries. And we respond to the cry. Well, let me see if the baby's hungry. Let me see if the pamper needs to be changed. And sometimes it's not either of those. And we get up during the night and we walk and we pet and we walk and we pet until the baby is quiet and goes back to sleep. We do all that we can do to provide for the comfort and the sustaining and the protection of the children that we bring into the world. What does God do for his children? God does for us the same as we do for our children. We get to a point in consciousness, as some folks say, a whole lot of folks. I'd be so glad when I get grown and I'm on my own. I can leave this home because I can't live under these rules and restrictions and all this. Let me go on out here and start my own life. Not realizing that if they're not properly prepared and ready, there's going to be some hardships and some struggles ahead. Be still. With all your gathering of the world, with all your going to and fro, take the time to set, be still, and commune with that God within you. Well, how do I know that this God is within me? I've been told so many times that God is somewhere up there in heaven. And in them days of going to church and so many times that you've heard God is up in heaven. And that one day Jesus is going to come back on a cloud and raise the dead. He's going to go around to all the cemeteries and raise all them folks that's been dead for years. Bodies done decayed and everything. But Jesus is coming back to raise the dead. You heard it. No one of us comes out of the church on Sunday morning looking up in the sky to see if Jesus is there on the cloud. We come out with our heads hung down. We might be feeling a little good, but we don't give it another thought that Jesus is going to return one day and raise the dead from their grave. We don't give it a thought. So we're not looking up there. We have a belief in our mind and our consciousness that somewhere up there, the Savior is. And one day he's coming to raise the dead, to resurrect the life within me. And I'm going on to be with the Heavenly Father. Let me read to you scripture, St. Luke, 17th chapter, 20 through the 21st verse. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Not going to be able to see it. Won't be able to point to it. Neither shall they say, lo here, 
or low there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. Now this is the master teacher Jesus speaking to the multitudes, the Pharisees that have questioned him. When cometh the kingdom? Or where is the kingdom that I may observe it? That I might see it? That I might point to it? And Jesus answered and said, Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. That's Luke 17, 20 through 21st verse. So if the master teacher is saying the kingdom of heaven is within you, why are we continuously looking outside of ourselves for the good, for the truth that will deliver us from all unwanted conditions? Why are we continually looking outside of ourselves for the peace and the joy and the harmony and the happiness that we so strongly seek and desire. Why is it so difficult for us to believe that the kingdom of God, now listen, if the kingdom of God is within you, and if God is in his kingdom, then you and I must be one with the God within. You remember there's a saying where Jesus was doing a mighty work and the multitude marveled at his works. And they were praising him. And Jesus said something to the effect it is not I that doeth the work, but the Father in me. It is Jesus that said, the Father and I are one. And those words that Jesus was speaking to the multitude also applies to us. We are one with the Father. We are one with that God consciousness. We are one with that source. And we cannot be separated. Only in our thinking. We have separated ourselves and our thinking from the source. And as long as we think and feel that we are separated from the source, we will continue with the struggles with the hardships, with the disappointments. We will never know peace. We will never know happiness. We will never know joy. We will never be free from sickness because we have looked. We have turned away from the source and we have looked to the world for our good. And we're not going to find it. The world has very little to give you. It will try to take away from you everything that you have, especially your peace, your joy, your harmony, your happiness. It will take away your ability to think for yourself. It will take away the freedom that God has given and invested in you. It will take away your hopes. It will take away your dreams, your ambitions. 
and it will so demand of you your time and your energy that you will not have time for yourselves and the things that are most important to you, not the world. The things that are most important to you, not the world. And when your whole focus is on the things of the world, you truly lose sight of what you truly are. You lose sight of the spiritual light that is within you. You lose sight of the spiritual being that you are. You lose sight of the spiritual power that you have within yourself. And you can never be free. Always bound and shackled by the desires and the temptations of the world. This is not the teachings of the master teacher. Nor is it the way of the spiritual life. We must take a look at these physical bodies that we have. And know that they will not be forever. And if we have any desire or intentions of experiencing that state or consciousness of heaven, then we must now start to do the work that will prepare us to enter into that kingdom that is within us. And so it is. Namaste and bless you.